our JavaScript. So I'm going to go take, I don't know if you have numbers in here. I'm going to take the numbers out. And I'm going to open up my JavaScript file. Script.js. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> let's make it so if you click a button, it knows, shall we? So first off, we need to just select everything we care about, right? So let's do selectors at the top. And we're going to say const buttons. Uh, I'm going to call them keys instead here because they're all buttons. But this is going to be, how about numbers? We'll do numbers. Numbers equals document dot query selector all so have we used query selector all yet maybe yes yes one time okay I'm also gonna make this here and put this here like that okay so we got query selector all and we're gonna select on number remember we gave all the numbers the number class okay um, so that's going to give us an array of all the numbers. Then I'm going to grab all the operators. Same thing, const operators equals document dot query selector all operator. Okay, and then I want to get the delete key, the reset key, and the equals key. So const delete equals document dot query selector and there's only one of these so we just want to select one delete I might change these names you're all gonna hate me because I sit and change names all the time so I'm gonna do it from numbers to number keys and operators num operator keys instead just so it's more explicit of what they are It'll be easier as we're going. Okay, and then same thing with the reset key equals document dot query selector, just the query selector and reset and then equals key equals document dot query selector equals okay Okay, and then here I'm going to have, so I'm just going to kind of throw some pseudo code out here so we know where we're going to do where. Okay, so here I'm going to throw some functions that we'll use when a cookie is clicked. Okay, and then down here I'm going to do event listeners. And... Uh, I think that's it for now. We'll also eventually add one more type of function. I guess let's put that here. Uh, we're going to do a render and uh, calculate functions. Okay, so we're going to write all of our event listeners. Um, so let's do... Let's start with our number keys. Anytime you click a number key. So because this is an array of keys, and really it's just a list of keys, right? So do you remember this? It's not a real array. It's a fake array. It's an HTML collection. But we do have a for each function on it, so we don't have to change it into an array because we just need the for each. 
So we're going to say number keys dot for each. And then this function is going to take a callback function, which is going to give us the element as the value. Um, it will also give us what, what number it is in the list. So it starts with zero because lists are zero indexed, right? You always start counting out zero instead of one. And then it will also give us the full list if we wanted it. We only care about the element in this case. So that's the parameter we will have in our function here. So we'll say key, okay? And then um, we're going to say key dot add event listener. So on each key, we're adding an event listener for click. And then we're gonna say handle uh, number and then we'll just call it handle number. Okay. And that's it for the number keys. Okay. <clears throat> so we will need to have that function up here so that we don't end up having an error when we do it. Uh, so let's add it now so we can just make sure that they're working. So const handle number equals, and we're going to get an event here. We want to we want to grab that event. Okay, we're just going to console.log event.target.inner text. Okay, so if you save that and then you go to your console, open up your console. Now, if we click the keys, we should get nothing because, you know, why would we? Levels of filter. Let's say console.log connected. So make sure in your HTML you have your script tag. So we got that in our HTML. So go to your HTML at the bottom, right before the body, closing body, make sure you have that. Because I don't think we wrote that the other day because I didn't write it. So it's very possible you didn't either. So just this line right here above the body. Above the body, yeah, that's great. Just that one, yep. Mm -hmm. Now they work. Do they say the number? Mm -hmm. Is that what it console logs? Mm -hmm. Okay. So inner text. I don't need this anymore. Okay, so now when I click them, notice the other buttons don't do anything because we haven't set up event listeners, but we do on all the numbers. Okay, so we'll come back and we'll make that handle number better later. Let's just add all the event listeners that we need. So we're going to do a similar thing for operator keys. Operator keys dot for each. Again, we only care about the element here. Okay, so we're gonna say key.add event listener on click and handle operator. And we'll add that function as well. Console.log event.target.inner text. Okay, actually we'll just do those two uh, add event listeners for now. And then we're gonna add, we're gonna make these work. And then we'll come back later and finish the other ones. 
math? What? Math? Yes, kind of. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to add um, up here above under the render stuff, I'm going to add a couple of uh, variables. So, because there's three things that I will want to know anytime anybody pushes any button. I want to know what the current number is, I want to know what the previous number is, and I want to know whatever operator has been pushed. Okay, so I'm going to have let current value, and this is going to be a blank string, let previous value is a blank string, and then let operator, which is also a blank string. Okay, and then anytime a number is pushed, that will go into the current value. Anytime an operator is pushed, then the current value will get pushed to the previous value plus whatever the operator was, right? And, and then we'll get ready to start a new number, okay? So we'll say if the number is pushed, then current value is going to plus equals that event.target.inner text. Okay. And then if an operator is called, then what we're going to do is we're going to say the previous value equals the current value. And the current value equals nothing, and the operator equals event.target.inner text. Okay, so this will set our previous value to whatever the value was when the operator is pushed. We'll get rid of our current value, and it will make our operator whatever we pushed. the handle number is this guy right here. Okay. So if you want to see that working while we're waiting, you can console.log and console log an object of current value, previous value, and operator. Okay, and then anytime you push a button, should update. Oh, no, it's not gonna update because we need a function that we call. So we'll call that in a second. So that won't work. Just wait for a minute. It's so cold. So you took something out here. You took out the console. Yeah, I don't have a console okay, logs on either of them. Value, that's why. Yeah. So we, we don't need the console logs anymore. Okay, so 
once these uh, are updated, then we need a way to put those numbers onto the output screen. Okay, so up here we're gonna create a new function called render. And that is going to change our output screen. So we need to go up and add two more selectors. One of them is going to be the current output. That's document.querySelector.current-output. And then const uh, previous output document dot query selector dot previous output okay so we're adding these two lines right here All right, we're good? Okay, so in our render function, what we're going to do is anytime render is called, we're going to update the, those two fields, these two pieces, okay? So we're gonna say render is called, so current output um, dot inner text is going to equal current value, okay? And previous outputs, inner text is going to equal a, so this is a <clears throat> string interpolation, so it's that back tick, okay, and this is going to be previous value space, oops, operator. Okay, for now we won't worry about adding commas. Maybe we'll do that later, but it'll just be a big old gnarly number if you put too many in. Okay, once you have those, then also add a call at the end of handle number to render, and also at the end of handle operator to render. 
Okay, so now if you have all this, and once you have all that, when you push a number, we need to fix some CSS. Because this should be at the bottom all the time. Because it should look like this. Also, on mobile, that looks stupid. Can you change the padding? It's too high. Okay. <clears throat> so what we'll want to do is on mobile, we'll have a, a min height on previous output and on current output. But it's okay for right now. Let's get the JavaScript done and then we'll tweak the CSS. Now it's set properties in the whole setting area. Uh oh. At render. At render. So one of your outputs is not selecting what you think it is, or maybe you have a spelling error on one of these two. So anytime you see cannot set property or cannot get property of undefined or null, then whatever you're trying to chain off of, so in this case it would be current or previous output, one of these, you've got something wrong here, or maybe your names are different. If it's null, I think that means that you probably have a typo of the constant name, the variable name. Easy way to tell is to double click it and select it. It should select both of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And make sure these are right. And if they are, then make sure they match what's in your HTML. Next time I'm wearing sweats. Secondary color shadow, uh, e was it equals shadow pool? Or Which one? For the uh, delete key. For the delete keys, hover or what? Is it just the hover. Which one that do? Was it secondary or was it shadow pool? I think it's delete key is secondary. It's secondary. the same as the reset key. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It's a key secondary. Sh yeah, key background secondary hover. Okay. The down one, yeah. Nothing like super long variable names. <laughs> oh. So that was on the box shadow. So this this one was the one we just did. Oh, okay. The other one should be the shadow one. This is the shadow one. Okay. No, this one's the yeah. This, this is one's the, the, the key. One. Yeah. That one. And then the one above it is is key shadow secondary. secondary. Yep. Hover. Oh, okay. Shadow. Oh. That equals. Secondary. Is it key shadow secondary? Yeah, probably. Would it be 
easy because I'm using a button operator rather than this operator. It is setting to null. So go back. Uh, go to your little selector. Uh, so take out the null and do the selector, the little arrow. And then you click on up here in the current value. So let's look at output. There it is. <laughs> it's a T. It's a T. All right, so now um, we need to add some more logic because you'll notice if you push a button, then it just kind of keeps doing this. Right? Okay, so we want it to actually add things up now. <clears throat> so in, and there's, there's two issues going on. We can also have multiple decimals. So let's fix the multiple decimal first. Okay, so we're gonna come here and we're gonna say, if current value dot uh, contains a period return okay so now that should be fixed contains is not a function yes it is mm -hmm. is it includes maybe includes okay we can add one Hold on, we need to do two things. If uh, I'm going to do const text equals or const num equals, and we'll take this off of here and make this num. Okay, so if num is equal to dot and it already exists then return okay i'm just going to add a comment here that says if the button or if the number is a period and the current value already has one then we don't want to add another one. <laughs> okay, does that make sense? And the reason I pulled this up here is I don't want to type event.target.innerText over and over. So I'll set it to a variable because we used it twice. Okay, so now if I type 21.5 and I try and hit dot again, dot doesn't work but all the other numbers do. So I changed the handle number to be this.
Yeah, you just have a console log still. So does it return just like? Or you, you can change this to number two. No. What? Return, is just like return just stops. So it just stops the current function from doing anything else. Cool. Okay. So in this case, we don't need to return anything. We just need it to stop. So we won't return anything. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm erasing this, this text area. Yeah, because yeah, we set it to a variable so we wouldn't have to select it off of the event over and over. So you can get rid of that console log too. Don't need it no more. Uh, just the console log. I'm working on that then. Yeah. There we go. All right. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is handle operator. So right now it just pushes everything up here anytime you hit an operator. But we want to check and make sure. If there's a previous value, then we want to actually operate with the previous value, okay? So we're going to create a function up here called, um, actually we're gonna put under render. We're gonna call it calculate. So const calculate. And we're going to Calculate what is in the previous value with what is in the current value. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we're going to um, take whatever these values are. Notice they are strings. What happens if I try and add two strings together? It'll concatenate. Yes. So it'll, which is super nice for what we're doing, right? That's exactly what we're doing is we're concatenating it with this plus equals right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but we don't want to do that when we actually calculate the numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to say const um, <clears throat> current num equals plus current value. So that plus will convert current value into a number. Remember that's what the plus operator does when you put it next to a string. And we're going to do the same thing with previous num equals plus previous value. So now we have two variables that contain these strings as numbers instead of strings. And then we're going to switch on the operator. Okay, so a switch allows us to write several different uh, statements without having to do if it's this, else if it's this, else if it's this, okay? That's right. Yeah, so we're gonna say case. If the case is a plus, then this is what we'll do. We'll say, um, we'll say previous value equals current Uh, let's see, actually, no, that's not what we want to do. Calculate, we want to, we'll just return. We're going to return the current number plus the previous number. And I'm actually going to switch those just so that we remember. It's going to be previous number plus current number because that will help me remember when I'm doing the other ones. The other ones will be the ones that makes that actually cares. Okay, so we don't have to do a break. Whenever you do these case statements, usually you write some code and then you write a break. But because we have a return here, it stops, and so we don't need a break. Okay, so then we're going to say case um, minus return previous number minus current number case star return 
previous number times current number case slash return previous number divided by current number and then we're going to do a default which means that it didn't match any of those return zero just in case the operator is set to nothing Yeah, we're going to call calculate in a couple places. So we're going to call it whenever there's a previous number uh, and you hit an operator, then we call calculate. So, and then also with equals. But it'll do different things for those two buttons. Yeah. Okay. Everybody got it? Okay. So now in our handle operator, we're going to say if not previous value, and then we're going to wrap the code that we already had in that if statement, My, except for the render. Okay. So if previous value doesn't equal anything, has no value, then we're going to do what we were doing before. Else, we're going to set previous value equals calculate. Okay, so we call calculate. It knows all the numbers and everything, and it's going to return whatever that value is. Okay, and actually these two will always do the same thing. So we're just gonna move them to the bottom. So if there's a previous value, then previous value, or if no previous value, then we just take current value and set it to previous value. But if there is a previous value, then we want to calculate and then send the previous value to whatever was the calculation and then set current value to nothing and set the operator to whatever the new operator is. Okay, so now if I do eight plus eight minus, so now I got 16 minus two plus six times Two divided by oh no what happened something broke oh this should be x mm. now let's try that again eight times three divided by two minus two plus five Okay. Everybody got that this should be an X, yeah? Mm -hmm. On the case for times? 
the, the bottom is the other one too, right? This one too, yeah. Oh, we can't do that one. This one has to stay. That one needs to stay as the stay start. The okay. Yeah. You're just still getting zero? Well, it did when I hit divide, but now it's working. Okay. Just turn to zero somehow. Maybe it was too small of a decimal. Oh, the values turned to zero? Yeah, but now it's, I don't know, now it's able to do a really tiny decimal, 0 0.15, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Interesting. JavaScript sucks at math. Remember we talked about this? Yeah, JavaScript's not that great at math. So we'll f maybe eventually fix our calculator. We're going to probably rewrite this calculator a couple different times to learn different ways to write JavaScript. So we'll do some object-oriented. I have infinity stuck in the <laughs> Yes. I divided by zero. Yes. <laughs> Infinity. Okay. Plus two. So next let's let me know when you're all done with this and it's working. Make sure to go test it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.